So this is a measures of center of discrete random probability distributions that continued. But basically what we're going to focus on is the median, the mode, and expectation theories for random probability distributions that are discrete. So you remember the difference between discrete and continuous so discrete, they actually have specific values and they can take integer numbers. So talking about the median. So the median is the middle value of the distribution. So it's a value that 50% lies on to the left and 50% lies to the right. So previously you may have had some results and what you may have learned was well, you find the middle one. You go well, one, two, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's the seven numbers. So therefore the fourth number is going to be the median because there's three to the left and three to the right. And so that's when each are equally likely. So when you add the probability, it's the same sort of thing. You want 50% to one side and 50% to the other. So relating this to a, a table example, what you want to do is you want to find where the point is at 50%. So you can add up these and you go 0 0.2. Well, that's less than 0 0.5. So I'll include 3. So add 0 0.15. What does that equal? That equals 0 0.35. So we need to add a bit more. So we'll add 4. That's 0 0.15. And that gives us 0 0.5. So it equals 50%. So we then go from the other side and we think, OK, there's 0 0.15 plus 0 0.35. So it equals 0 0.5, which equals 50%. Now, if we picked 4, exactly 4, then it's actually not in the middle. And if we picked exactly 8, it's not exactly in the middle. Because if once we pick that number, that probability isn't included. So what happens is it's actually in between 4 to 8. Because to the right is 50%, as we've added these two up, and it equals 50%. And if you go to the left, you add those numbers up, and you get 50%. So it's between 4 and 8. So all you can just do is you can go 4 plus 8 divided by 2 equals 12 divided by 2, which is equals 6. So it's a middle number. So you could say the median equals 6. So the other measure of distribution is the mode. So the mode is the most frequently occurring number. So with yeah, so the mode is the most frequently occurring number, result, outcome. So you could have an average of let's say fifty five percent on a test. You could have a median of sixty percent but your mode could be 72%. So why is that so weird? Maybe four kids were copying and they all got 72%. Well, it could, there could be other examples, but the mode is just the most common outcome of all of them. So if you look at these ones above, you have one, so that's 0 0.2, so that's 20% of the time. You have three, 15%, four, 15%, eight, 35, 10, 15. So you find the one with the highest probability, which is 8, because that's 0 0.35. So most of the time, 8 will occur. It's the most common outcome. If you played this game 10 times, most likely the number that occurs the most will be 8. So you can just say the mode equals 8. So now just going back to the expected value, there are some theories with that. So I said you represent it like this, the expected value, and I'll just say A. So remember, just A means any number. Now, there are some theories. So if you go 2x, from this result, you can work out what the result will be. But firstly, what does 2x mean? It means that x are all the outcomes. So you're timesing every outcome by 2. So if the, it was number of goals scored, every time a goal is scored, you're effectively timesing it by 2. So the expected value of that distribution 
is just 2a. It's whatever this number is, and then you times it by that. And that should make sense, because the if you're timesing every number by a constant, then the expected value is just going to be what the expected value was times by that, by that constant, because every single variable, you're timesing it. What I'm saying is, I'm not saying that just one variable is times by two. So if you had number of, number of goals scored and the expected value was two, and then you suddenly times, let's say, three by two, so you get zero, one, two, six. That's, and let's say we'll call this x, then this is going to be y. This is a different distribution. So y is not equal to 2x, because only one of the outcomes is times by 2, not every single one. On contrast, if you had 0, 2, 4, 6, then that would be different. That would be 2x. So that's the first rule. Another one is, what about if you times or if you plus or minus a certain variable. So we'll call it B. So that means for every single outcome, just like this, you're adding instead of timesing. What you get is you get A plus B. And it's the same thing. If you do everything to the same variable for the expected value, then you're just going to get the expected value plus that variable. If you think about a game, a, ga um, a money game, if every time you play you now win an extra two dollars well your expected value is going to be whatever your expected value before was plus two dollars because it's guaranteed you're getting that two dollars every time if for example you lost two dollars every time then it would be a minus two dollars so remember a is just a number and i'm just representing it as the expected value of x but you could sub in any number and you could work out what the next one was. The so expected value of... So from this formula we can... Oh, we'll do this one. x plus y equals the expected value of x plus the expected value of y. So y could be a different distribution and x could be another distribution. So if you add all the variables of x and y together in terms of the probabilities then, and you find the expected value, then it's the same as adding these two together. So it's a similar thing with adding a constant that you can split it up. So just a general rule to remember is that if there's anything inside the brackets of E, you can split them up or take them outside. So if we know we can now split this up, we can get E to the X plus E to the B. And we know that from this rule up above here. Because we could x and y don't have to be distribution. They could just be a number. Now we know that this equals e to the x plus b from up here. Because we said e to the x plus b equals a plus b. And remember a is just here. So what does that tell us. It means that e to the b must equal b. So the expected value of a constant just equals a constant, and that makes sense, because the expected value of a constant 5 is just 5. So the final point I wanted to, the f final formula I wanted to mention, was that the expected value of x squared inside the brackets does not equal the expected value squared. So I put an example down here. If you have the values x equals 0, 10, and 20, and so they're each equally likely. So they're, they're, each of them have an equal chance. Then the expected value of average is just going to be 20 plus 10 plus 0 divided by 3. So that's 30, 30 on 3. So the expected value is just 10. And if you square the expected value, you get 100. What happens though if you square the outcomes first, and then you work out the average. Well, you get 0, because 0 squared is 0. 10 squared is 100. 
and 20 squared is 400. Add them together and divide by 3 and you get 503 which is approximately 167. So these are not equal. So you may be wondering why is this formula up here not the case. We don't need to specifically know but it's to do with that if you have extreme values then when you square them they're going to get much bigger comparatively to the smaller values. So when 10 went to 10, 100, that was an increase of 90. When 20 went to 400, that was an increase of 380. Now if I times them together, so like times it by constant, such as 10 times 2, like 10 times 3, I'd get 30. 20 times 3, I'd get 60 and you maintain the same sort of ratio but when you square that doesn't happen because effectively you're timesing by different numbers because here you're timesing 10 by 10 and up here you're timesing 20 by 20 so you're timesing one number by 10 but the other number by 20 so it's not going to be constant thanks for watching guys